Well, we're doing a class coming up on angels in January during our great grand launch of our Spiritual Growth Academy. And this academy is going to bring you some of the best instructors and ministers to teach you about things you really care about, like hearing God, interpreting dreams. And next month, angels rolls in your life with Charity Burkler Kayembe. And the best news is that the classes are interactive with both live sessions that are recorded for later use if you need to watch them recorded. But there's also pre-recorded videos with activities that go along with many of them. We also feature a monthly two-hour live event with great speakers like Christine Kane, Real Talk uh, Kim. If you don't know her, she's a, she's a trip. Awesome. But we have incredible classes coming up on angels hearing God, on things like spiritual leadership. These, these are for you. Some of your churches, some of your local communities don't have these regularly involved and I want to give you classes that you could actually grow in right now, do, do the heavy lifting of your spiritual growth with you and have teachers that you can access and a community that you could ask questions to and a pastoral team that can really support you. So you can join all of this. It's only $25 a month and you're going to get the mentoring you need in bite-sized pieces that are doable right now. But today I'm excited because I have Charity on and I wanted to talk to Charity and bring her on about angels because we were, we're celebrating the season that had some of those prolific in the New Testament time of angelic visitation and encounter. And, and Charity, my guest today, believes that we can activate and access the angels around us. And when I say that, some of you go, wait, isn't that new age? No, because God is the God of all the angel armies. And Charity's going to bring a really balanced perspective. So Charity, come on up. And thank you for that, Adrian, on YouTube. Thank you for that gift. So Charity, here we are. I'm so excited you're here. Thank you. I am so excited to be here. I appreciate you having me back. I know this is our second time together on this kind of format. Now, this is your real specialty to talk about angels and to talk about heaven. And I love this because most people don't know how to talk about it, so they avoid it, especially with all the new age rhetoric that's out there. But you have this perspective that why in the world are we not activating all of heaven's resources, including this army that Jesus has at his disposal? Talk to us about why angels and what can we do about heaven around us? Well, you're right. There are like 365 references to angels in the Bible. So it's not a small topic. We've got a verse for every day of the year. So it's not a minor thing in God's mind. And it doesn't really matter what you think about angels. And it doesn't matter what I think about angels. It matters what God thinks. And how do we know what he thinks? We go to the word. And so we, we see in scripture, oh my goodness, people are, they're interacting with angels, right? They're having conversations with angels. And some people might think it sounds new age, but to me, well, that sounds like Zechariah, right? That sounds like Daniel. That sounds like Jesus and the Gospels and John and Revelation. So, so we're just realizing, oh my goodness, the Bible is not just a book of old stories. The Bible is meant to be lived. Oh, I love that. Well, talk to us about this season because we're in Christmas and so much of why we celebrate Jesus's birth and how he was heralded was because of angels and was because of the angelic visitation of, of Mary. And because Joseph got a dream by an angel in the night or because of the shepherds coming because they had an angelic visitation together. We don't know how many shepherds there were. A lot of times it was put like two in a nativity scene. But a lot of people from Rabbi Jason Sobo, said it was a whole company of them. It was a whole group of them who had an angelic visitation together where angels were singing glorious songs, you know, which we still, you know, handles Messiah. You know, we, we sing these songs, too. But talk about this season in Angels. Well, you're, you're right. You can't really read the Christmas story without tripping over an angelic encounter. But <laughs> I'm most excited about that because like, what does it have to do with us? Like, what are the principles that we can see from scripture yeah. that are relevant for our everyday lives and our interacting with angels? And you just mentioned several of them, but we could even start with Zacharias, right? The, the priest, first he's in the temple, right? And then the angel Gabriel comes and tells him, oh, your wife is going to have a baby. So, so that's kind of what we think of with angels. We think, okay, well, maybe a pastor, maybe in church, they're going to have an angelic encounter. And that's great. Yes, we can absolutely meet angels in church, just like Zacharias. But then we fast forward to, oh, Mary, right? She's not a pastor. She's not in church. She's at home. Oh, and she's like, like a 14-year-old girl. Exactly. She's a teenage girl. And then she gets this amazing encounter with the angel. And I think it's incredible. The clearest explanation of the incarnation it's an angel that delivers it to a teenage girl, wow. right? So how much is wow. God honoring angels and honoring young women when he entrusts this kind of a revelation? Amazing. You know, and she asked, she has a question about this. She doesn't understand. She asks the angel. She has this bold back and forth conversation with Gabriel. So why is that relevant to us? Well, oh my goodness. Well, if she can converse with angels, well, we can too, right? And it's not just for the pastors in church. Oh, she was at home. 
right? And then yeah. you mentioned the shepherds. Oh my goodness. Well, what's, how is that relevant to us? Well, all kinds of ways we can meet angels on the job. How about that? Right. They were taking care of their flocks <laughs> at night. Yeah. Angels will minister to us when we're at work. And I think it's really interesting too. You know, they said the angels came, we know we've all seen the Christmas pageants, right? The angels came to them, delivered the message. And then what did the, what did the shepherds say? They said, well, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing, which the Lord has made known to us. And that's a principle for us that we're going to listen to angels, not for angels sake, but because they are messengers from God. That's true. It wasn't the Lord himself. It was an angel, but they honored it as if it was God's word because it was. That's why we want to listen to angels. And the best part about that story is, oh my goodness, we might be afraid that, you know, interacting with angels, listening to them, looking at them, you know, does that distract us from our relationship with Jesus? Well, let's look in the Bible. Did it, did it take the shepherds away from Jesus? No, it took the shepherds to Jesus. They were the first people to be able to worship baby Jesus. Why? Because they listened to the angels. So we see, oh, there's angels in church, there's angels at home, there's angels on the job. And then is it just during the day? Well, no, because just like you said, we've got Joseph. Okay, we have angelic visitations while we sleep. So the angel came to him through the dream. And so we see, oh my goodness, no matter where we are, whether awake or asleep, in church, at home, on the job, God is wanting the angelic to intersect our lives, our everyday lives. Well, so, I mean, you talk and it's so natural. It's like so normal. But then you have this anxiety. I can feel people have anxiety, like angels, like that's, you know, because we've, we've relegated them to be in Christmas pageants as cute little girls who get to dance with wings and or maybe sing their song. And we don't think of these powerful beings that help God shape the world. I mean, that that literally are his messengers, are his warrior army, are his all of these things. And so I, I think a lot of people, when they think of angels, because the new age has done such a bad but good job as far as like angel numbers and angels, every angels everywhere, but it's not really unto Jesus being made known. It's unto someone getting empowerment. It's usually an angel of light or, or a demonic spirit. But like, how do we get reconcile that where people don't feel empowered or they don't feel like they feel so, such a disconnect from the angelic because of even the, the modern church has been so disconnected. Well, that's a good question. And you're right. I'm sure you've heard it's been said we can, we can tell how powerful a truth is by the amount of controversy that the enemy surrounds it with. That's good. Right? And so there's a lot of controversy around angelic encounter. And that just makes me think, hey, what is he so scared of? Right? What does he know once we start partnering with the angelic to bring heaven to earth? Well, game over, right? He he can't stand against that. So that's why I believe he just puts so much fear yeah. into us. But if we can have a heart revelation of what scripture actually has to say about angels, and we go back to the Bible and we just find out, well, what was God doing through the ministry of angels in scripture? Well, okay, then that's safe for me, right? Those things were written as examples for us. So, oh, that means that we can do them too. So give me kind of a modern example. What does it look like in your life? Because you teach this and you activate people all the time. What does it look like? Because a lot of people are, again, they start out afraid. They start out like, wait, am I accessing angels instead of God? And you already described why we're not doing that. But like, let's talk about that. What does it look like today for me to not just have a guardian angel who is standing over me and driving with me, but an actual angel that brings the manifest glory of God into situations in my life? What does that look like? Well, um, well, I see my angels whenever I look for them. Um, wow. Shobis, okay. They've been with me since I was four years old is when I first told my mom about them. And oh so I'm not super special or spiritual. I just had parents that taught me we could engage the supernatural realm. So this is something we're going to teach in our- Wait, let me dad. say this about your dad. Not, not that you want to be identified in the sense that you're your own minister, but your dad has taught more people in an accredited hearing God's voice course than any other person in history. And I cut my teeth on Mark's uh, lessons and on his classes. So I do want to say like your dad's background is he's been a champion of hearing God's voice for generations. And I love that the next generation, meaning like it's probably four generations of people have gone through his stuff. I love that his next generation, you, is bringing a demystified view of some of the supernatural things like dreams and angels. So keep going. 
Well, you're right. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, I would talk about my angels and, you know, a lot of parents would just kind of dismiss this. That's your imagination. Like imaginary friends. Grow yeah. up, you know, but my dad's like, oh, don't look at the things that are seen. Look at the things that are unseen, yeah. right? My mom encouraged me. She knew that I was seeing my angels. And so we teach you, oh my goodness, well, everybody has spiritual eyes. We can all see in the spirit once we know the steps to take. And, and so what does that look like? You know, um, you know, my angels, they'll tell me, you know, um, well, we love being about father's business with you. You know, we love serving father with you. Or or if I'm like stressed out, if I'm like overwhelmed about something, you know, they'll be like, oh, don't worry, milady. Father has a plan. Father always has a plan. And, you know, and that's encouraging, but I did get on their case. I'm like, come on, where do you guys get off calling God father? Because last time I checked, I was the daughter of God and you're, you know, just angels, whatever. But then they took me to scripture. Okay, in Job, do you know what over and over, James, uh, the angels are referred to in the book of Job, they're the sons of God. Yeah. The sons of God. Well, I'm the daughter of God. Well, that that explains why I have a sibling vibe from them, right? They're kind of like the big brother I always wish I had, you know, the best version of your very best friend. And so, yes, so they're, and this kind of is to speak to your, your question about, are we dishonoring God by honoring angels? And this is how God kind of explained it to me. Because I'm like, you know, Jesus, I love you. You know, Holy Spirit, you're my best friend. Father, of course, I want to focus on you. And of course, we don't want to be distracted from that relationship. But God's like, well, just remember back when you were first dating your husband, my now husband, Leo. You know, when you were getting to know him. What if every time you invited him over to your house to meet your family or to hang out with your friends, what if he said, oh, no, Charity, I just want to focus on you. I don't I don't really want to meet your family. I don't really care about wow. the people in your yeah. world because I love you so much. I'm just going to ignore them. Huh? That's not very healthy, right? That's not love. And so God's like, hey, these are my sons, right? The sons of God. I created them for you, assigned them to you, and you actually honor me best by honoring the angels, right? So that's why, oh my goodness, we are, we are honoring God. We're not ignoring and marginalizing, you know, the angels. And especially it's a little bit presumptuous too, because I used to think, oh my goodness, when I, when I pray, you know, God himself, he should like get up off his throne and come and help me with whatever I got going on. And God's like, oh, yeah, I actually have people for this, right? And the people are the angels, <laughs> right? Like yes. Presidents and kings and prime ministers, they have people that do stuff. Well, so does God. And so it actually honors God more when we realize, oh, there are angels. There's that an authority can structure, yeah. Yes. There's a total authority structure. And there's a relational authority structure, which is really cool. Well, I love this. And I think some people still feel uncomfortable. And I'm glad because I think you need to learn you don't want to ignore God's army. You don't want to ignore the help that's there for you. So I'm going to encourage you to come to the class, sign up for a class in January. You're going to love it. Charity is doing four live sessions. She's going to be activating this in your life, teaching it biblically, but also there's some pre-recorded stuff to do some activations with as well. Come join us, Charity. I'm so glad you were with us today. Thanks for being with us and just being vulnerable because I know not everybody in the body of Christ is comfortable with this. And I, I, I want to see more people comfortable with all that God has to offer. And this is one of those Huge things, like you said. I love an angel a day. There's 365. We should make a calendar, although some would be the angels that judge the bad. You know, like it'd be hard because you'd see some of the hard stuff too. But we need to study it all so we understand what heaven's like. So thanks for being with us today. 